Welcome to Sumo Logic. So I assume you just got a new account. And if this is the first time you log on, you probably look at a screen similar to this. You can X out of it. And today we're not going to talk about loading data into the system. But instead, we're going to assume that someone already loaded that data for you. And we want to know how do we proceed, how we start searching that data. So um, first things to note is if you're presented with this screen, one of the things that you can do is you can start searching your data by one of these metadata fields collector, source, source category, and so on. I'm going to choose source category, which is what we normally suggest. And you will notice that the system presents me with the different options of source categories available to me. I'm going to choose Apache Access, which most people know about. If I click Start, what just happened is it looked for the last 15 minutes worth of data that exists for Apache Access source category. You can change this time frame for anything that is in here, let's say the last 60 minutes. But what if I wanted the last 45 minutes, which doesn't exist as an option? No worries. I can say minus 45 M or D for days or H for hours, and you get the point. If I say last 45 minutes and hit enter, this is now searching for the last 45 minutes worth of data. Or perhaps I actually want 15 minutes worth of data, but with a 30 minute offset. So that is from minute 45 to minute 30. So really only 15 minutes worth of data that I'm pulling in here. Great. As you can expect as well, you can filter your data. Maybe I just want to see those messages with, that have a status code as 404. And you notice that there was no need for me to put an and because it was implicit. So now I'm grabbing those messages that have a 404. But perhaps that's also bringing me back messages that have 404 in the size. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do a little bit of parsing so that I can really pull out those fields that I care for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a message like this one and I'm going to say, grab everything all the way up to this end over here and parse that selected text. Fantastic. I can now say this is going to be my URL and then I'm going to have something that says HTTP URL. Then I'm going to grab the status code which is in here and I'm also going to grab size which is in here. So I can say status code and size. Fantastic. I can now click submit and what's going to happen is Sumo Logic is going to build that parsing statement for me. If I run this now for the last 15 minutes or the 15 minutes that I had chosen, what you'll see is my message is still here on my right hand side, but the fields that I decided to parse are now here on this side already parsed. Let's make a more intelligent query now. What if I wanted to count by status codes? So I can do a count by status code. Since status code is already a parsed field, I can search for that and I can get myself a nice little count of status codes for these 15 minutes worth of data. So as I expected, most of them are 200s. All right, let's take a step back. Uh, what if someone had already done all the heavy lifting for me? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment out these fields that are in here and just run this query for source category equals Apache access. Fortunately for me, someone who already loaded the data also did the heavy lifting and if you look at the field browser on my left hand side they've already parsed out a lot of these fields for me here's my url here's my status code they parsed out the source ip as well so i don't even have to take care of that they've parsed out the the refer the method so the good news to me is that as an analyst i don't have to go do all this parsing that i showed you here because someone already parsed that stuff out for me which means i could have really just done a count by status code. This might not be your situation. Maybe you haven't had someone do all the parsing, but if you have, it's always good to check and make sure that those fields are already in place or not. Fantastic. I'm going to cheat a little bit and take you to a more advanced query just because I want to get advanced quickly on this. So here you go. I do my source category equals Apache Access. I can search for anything that has the word get, then do my parsing if nobody has done it for me. And in this particular case, I'm saying I don't want status code 200s and 304s. Perhaps I want to focus on all other status codes. That's what the not is all about. And then I'm time slicing. This allows me to trend over time. So I'm going to time slice by one minute. So these 15 minutes worth of data, I'm time slicing by one minute. So I'm having 15 buckets, if you will. And then I'm going to count by status code. Then I'm going to sort that data. And I'm going to use something called transpose to really allow me to look at that data in a more meaningful way. And voila, what you get here in just a second is the data shown by time slice and by status code for the last 15 minutes. Here you go. I'm going to show you how I can display that data a little more meaningful. There you go. But I am no machine, and it's a little easier to look at this data if I were to plot it. So I can choose any of the plotting 
options that I have in here. More about this in the future um, videos, but I can easily plot my data and find out some of the ways that I can visualize that data. I'm going to cheat again and look and show you another option. Since source IP is something that had already been parsed, I'm going to use it in here using the lookup operator. Um, in this particular case, look for longitude and latitude against this service called GeoDefault on that IP address, then count by latitude and longitude, and I end up with a count of latitude and longitude, which is where my messages are coming from. I can easily map this by doing such a thing. And of course, the usual stuff applies. If I uh, zoom in or zoom out, I would get all those messages to, uh, to appear on my screen. Fantastic. Last thing I want to show you is the ability to lifetail. So if I had a search, let's say this one in here where I'm doing source categories equals Apache access, but I want to lifetail that data, I can start it from here. I can say lifetail that information. Of course, it's only going to lifetail the data that I um, it cannot do any aggregation in Lifetail, so it's just going to grab that first line. And now you see it's actually scrolling all the messages that are coming in live uh, for Apache Access. I can stop that scrolling in two ways. One is I can hit this pause button over here, or I could have scrolled up and down with my mouse, and that would have paused it as well. I can get it to start running again by hitting this button here, or hitting this down arrow and going. As you would expect, I can also do filtering. For example, I only want to filter those that have a 404. And hand in hand with the filtering is the highlighting. I can click on this and say, I want to highlight anything that has a 404, or perhaps I want to highlight all those that say that have the word Mozilla in it as well. Fantastic. Similar to that, I can open, I can multitail. So I can then run another one on source category equals Apache error, for example and I can do its own um, highlighting and all that good stuff as well, as you can imagine. Great. Um, as you would expect, if I'm also running a live tail on something and I want to go back to the search and run a few trends, I can do the same. From here, I can jump back into show and search. This will take me back to the searching screen, in which case um, it's going to give me source category equals Apache error. It's going to default to the last 15 minutes. And I'm going to see my data running in here. I hope this has been meaningful for you, and at least you can get yourself started with searching through Sumo Logic. Thank you.